doing my thing on do your thing well today i am in a little town called chatham it's in kent in the uk and i'm about to meet a very very interesting and inspiring man he is a music and entertainment entrepreneur his name is adil rashid so we're gonna go in and have a quick chat with adil let's go I'm very well. It's so good to finally have you on Do Your Thing. I'm so honored that you've invited me on. I want to hear all about it. I mean, your background in music, you've done oh, all kinds goodness. of things. Uh, you know, were you born and uh, raised in the UK? Um, no, I was born in Tanzania, oh. in East Africa. Came over here at the age of three. And um, uh, the main reason I think my dad wanted us to have education over here in the UK because he'd heard it was so good. So a lot of years now. Right. Um, <coughs> Forty-five. <coughs> Sorry, a terrible cough. We didn't hear that. I mean, yes. Right from the early days when I started at secondary school, mm -hmm. I was uh, age thirteen, and I started. Uh, I inherited a record collection from my older sisters, hmm. just little old seven-inch records, and so I started being the sort of resident DJ at our school youth club. And then I became quite good at it. And they said, well, why don't you do the school discos? So I did that and everything else followed. Next thing I know, at the age of 15, I got invited out to work in a club. Wow. So I wasn't even old enough to be in the club. But there I was DJing and nobody ever actually asked my age. But after a few years of doing clubs, I was going to university. And I was offered quite a lot of work. And my father fell out with me because he said, well, you're leaving university to go and do music. It's not a proper career. But I found myself doing very well at it. And by the time I was 21, I bought my first house. I was scouted by a record company because they thought I was a pretty good DJ. I worked on radio for the BBC. I worked in clubs. And they said, come and sign bands for us or sign music. Come and be an A&R person. Wow. Next thing, little did I know that there'd be a 20 plus year career in the music industry signing and promoting music and some of the acts I've been involved with range from Snap who did I Got the Power, Rhythm is a Dancer right the way through to launching the Spice Girls wow. through my promotion company that I ran Quite so, a start there Yeah, there's a lot going on and then um, I sort of evolved into having my own record labels having worked for all the majors like Sony and Arista and, uh, and Ministry of Sound and I had my own label and um, a few years ago, about 2004, I launched the career of a certain Indian artist called Raghav, who right. went on to do OK. Uh, the, the Angel Eyes, Raghav. Yes, Angel mm -hmm. Eyes, Can't Get Enough, and all those tracks. And, um, of course, was privileged enough to work with a little lady called Rini as well. So, you know, it, it was a, a very uh, entertaining and enjoyable time in my life. In all honesty, not too much new music excites me. So it's also no coincidence as to why on iTunes heritage or catalog music outsells new music five to one. And there's Is that a right? That's an absolute fact. These days, the record companies and the radio stations and media outlets don't really give new music too much of a chance. They sort of they expect you as an artist to have a ready-made audience to bring to them. Whereas in the old days, a radio station would take a chance with a brand new artist like Bob Marley and they would play one of his songs and he would be discovered by loads of people yeah. and that's when you had real artists these days it's all manufactured you know record companies that do sign an artist um, really want the ready-made thing they must have a million followers on YouTube they must have at least half a million Twitter followers and to me really good artists these days don't need record good artists can set up their own promotional activities and put themselves forward. The live entertainment side is what sort of made sense and right here on my doorstep where I live in Gillingham in Kent, literally a mile away we're sitting in this wonderful um, untapped uh, venue called Dickens World which is basically a tourist attraction based around the life and times of Charles Dickens who is the famous author who came 
from this area of Kent. I personally wanted to give something back to the nice community that I've lived in for all these years, finally give them a nice venue where they could go as a mature audience because the kids have lots of places to go in this area. But the sort of 30 plus age group don't really have anywhere to go that's nice. So by doing what we're doing here, I feel I'm giving something back to the community that I lived in and they're loving it. From Tanzania, come to London, you know, start DJing from 15, moving on, signing the biggest acts. And finally, you know, um, after showing people the way, you've decided to turn this amazing place around, give a completely new life. And, uh, you know, what can I say? You, you truly are an inspiration. Thank you very much. And it's now that time of the show where, you know, you tell people what to do. You want me to tell people what to do? Very simple. All you've got to do right now is do your thing. That's right. Nothing, 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 nothing